Support for the Nature Museum is provided by Rose Pest Solutions, protecting homes, businesses, health, and the environment since 1860. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Curious by Nature. My name is Annabelle, and today we're going to take a closer look at reptiles and amphibians. Have you ever wondered, how can you tell reptiles and amphibians apart? What are some of the differences between reptiles and amphibians? We are going to answer those questions with some help from Erin and some of our Nature Museum friends. Let's head on over to the science labs to meet these cold-blooded critters. Uh, so I'm joined here by Biggie the corn snake, and he is a reptile. Can we think of other animals that are reptiles? So lizards and snakes and um, dinosaurs were reptiles. So Biggie has lots and lots of bones within his very long body. He's got a very long spine and rib bones all the way from the top of his head to the tip of his tail. And Biggie is covered in scales. And scales, we'll take a look at them, are made out of the same things that your fingernails are made out of, keratin. It's a building block of scales. So if you take a peek at your own fingernails, you will see they almost look like snake scales. And the reason reptiles are covered in kind of a drier, scalier skin than other cold-blooded animals is that that allows them to live almost anywhere. So you could find a reptile in lots of different habitats. You could find them in marshes, mountains, prairies, forests. With a dry, scaly, protective skin, they don't have to worry about much. They're completely protected all over their body. So let's take a deeper look at Biggie's scales. And as we take a peek at them, you'll notice that there are different shapes happening across his body. So the scales on the very top of his body, they're gonna be kind of shaped like almonds. So they're very round. Well, the scales on his belly are very long and very flat. And there's a reason for that. So having very long and kind of thicker or wider scales on his belly allows Biggie, if he were in the wild, to have some tread on his belly. He would slither around on lots of different habitats. So there might be pine needles, leaves, sand, gravel. And having almost like tread, like the bottom of your boots in the snow, having tread on your belly means he's not gonna slip or slide over anything while he might be pursuing prey or finding a safe space to go. <laughs> He's so curious. Biggie is part of a group of animals called reptiles. They all had this drier, scalier skin that protected them. And while they have dry, scaly skin, their eggs are gonna be something that give them away as well as reptiles. So reptile eggs are gonna have a leathery case to them and have everything that that young needs to survive inside. And when a young snake hatches out of an egg, it's gonna look almost exactly like its parents. It's gonna be just a smaller version of that animal. And while I mentioned that Biggie is a cold-blooded animal, he's an ectotherm, that means that he gets his energy by the temperature around him. So in his enclosure at the Nature Museum, he has a heat lamp because a warm spot for a snake is gonna give them energy. So imagine if you were cold-blooded and you woke up on a very cold fall day in Chicago, you might be a little sleepier if you're cold-blooded than if you woke up on a really beautiful July morning in Chicago when it's much warmer. Ectotherm, again, just means cold-blooded, which means that you get your energy from the temperature around you. So I'm a warm-blooded animal. Biggie here is a cold-blooded animal, so I'm gonna be a warm spot for him. You can see that he might have a little bit more energy as we are out here together, just because he's picking up on that 98 degrees of a warm-blooded animal. So I'm gonna put Biggie back in the lab, back to his enclosure, but we're gonna be joined by another Living Collections friend that will tell us a little bit more about what amphibians are and maybe some differences between amphibians and reptiles and how those differences might just be skin deep. Now we're joined here by Dart, the tiger salamander, and he is an amphibian. Can we think of other amphibians around? So I usually think about frogs or toads, newts, and salamanders. They're all part of the amphibian group. And with Dart, his skin is very, very different from Biggie's skin. When we look at him, I always take out some RO water from the looking lab at the Nature Museum. 
That stands for reverse osmosis water. It's a process in which all the impurities of tap water are taken out. So when we handle dart, we handle him with just the cleanest water because his skin is so, so porous. That means it can soak up a lot of different things. In fact, the skin on dart looks a little bit more, or acts a little bit more like a dish sponge than it does for our own skin. So when we're looking at dart and exploring his skin, I want us to look at his entire body because a lot of people, when they see a tiger salamander, they're out and about in Illinois. They are actually the state amphibian. They look a lot like a lizard does. They have a head, four arms, one really long tail. And with those features, people tend to think reptile and lizard. But with the salamander, what's gonna give them away right away is their skin will not be scaly, like Biggie's skin. And when you look at those four limbs at the very ends of each of his fingers, there's not gonna be any claws. A lot of lizards are gonna have keratin at the very end of their fingertips. With a salamander, without any scales, without any keratin, there aren't going to be any claws. And instead, you're just gonna see very stubby, um, tinier fingers that are really good for sticking onto things. So when you're looking at amphibian um, hands, you're not gonna see claws. You might even see something more like a, a suction cup. Another thing that would make amphibians amphibians are their eggs. So salamander eggs are gonna be more like jelly and they're laid in the water. They need to have a source of moisture always. And then when salamander eggs hatch, instead of looking like just smaller versions of salamanders, they're gonna look a lot more like tadpoles. So amphibian eggs need a lot more time to grow after they hatch. And the one thing that is similar when it comes to reptiles and amphibians is that they're both cold-blooded. So start here is an ectothermy, is a cold-blooded animal. So let's think about what we saw. We saw Biggie the corn snake with scales, with dry skin, and we saw Dart the tiger salamander with moister skin. So when it comes to differences between reptiles and amphibians, it's really just skin deep. That's our show for today, folks. We hope you learned something new about reptiles and amphibians. If you have questions about reptiles or amphibians, or their similarities or differences, please be sure to drop them in the comments below. Want to keep learning about our cold-blooded friends? We've picked out these videos just for you. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. We'll see you next time on Curious by Nature.